Oh, what's up everybody? I just got out of the shower. Uh, I am not ready at all. Let's, uh, let's get ready. Thanks everybody for coming. Let's get this guy turned around. All right. Appreciate your guys' patience here while I uh, catch up. Huge thanks as always to the one and only Monsieur Joshua Baranduel for the shout out and the uh, and being cool about me riding his coattails every single Monday and or Sunday and Monday rather. All right, let's get the power bank plugged into my phone here. Very very unprofessional operation here at uh, CID FPV headquarters, but that's okay. Gotta fake it till you make it, right? As they say. All right, let's get this power bank bungeed to the uh, to the stand that I have this camera on. I should show you guys what I'm doing. This is ridiculous. You know what? I will. Hold on. Hold on. You guys are gonna kick out of this ridiculous setup. Let's get some uh, let's get some light in here too. Man, I am woefully unprepared. All right, come on, come on. Showed the broken frame. That's cool. what I showed as the you're gonna talk about why the frame's broken. Perfect. Thank you. Lovely woman. So Kristen just let me know we're talking about the broken frame. Which is awesome. If anybody didn't see it, I will uh, show you. But uh, check this out. Check out this madness that uh, this is basically my setup. I'll show you guys my setup. Here's the uh, here's the small little stand that I use when it's on my desk and this little grabby guy the phone just slides in there and this little grabby guy uh, adjusts for different phones so I'm gonna slide you guys in here so that you can see the ultra jank setup I have with another one of these um, so I do this all on my phone for the time being and uh, the phone battery goes dead. So, I got this stand, right? And I got a power bank. So I take the power bank, it looks like a flask, which is fun. A friend of mine got this for me for Christmas one year, and it was one of those presents where I was like, mm, I'm never gonna use that. And then uh, nowadays I do use it a lot. Way, way, way more than I would have ever thought. So, we got this here, and this is a ball bungee. If you don't know what a ball bungee is, go to Amazon and type in ball bungee. These things are pretty awesome. If you're doing any kind of uh, lighting or photography or kind of just anything in life. So you can wrap it around like this, stretch it, pull the ball over, and just tuck the ball in to the other end, and that will not go anywhere. That is a surprisingly good hold there um, and then just plug the little phone in. How about that, fellas and ladies? So let's do that. Let's get you guys in the right stand here. So this is like the new camera angle from this side. I forgot to ask if anybody liked it last time. What's up, AZ Drone Dude? Um, but yeah, I'm going to try this, uh, this little angle out here because I think it's kind of good. But, uh, you know, what do I know? If you guys don't like it, let me know. Why is this not long enough all of a sudden? What? Oh, because it's not the right cord. Of course. Here we go. This is the cord we need. Thanks, everybody, for your patience. I will be looking at the chat in a second. Like I said, just hopped out of the shower. I wanted to be... Uh, I didn't want to stink for you guys, you know? I didn't want you to be watching me being like, man, this guy fucking stinks. So, uh, I took a shower for you. That's how much I love you guys. Wait, 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 no, I'm putting this in the, oh, this is facing the wrong way. Shit sticks. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna reverse it. I'm gonna put the camera on the other side so that the microphone is pointing towards me um, because you guys have let me know in the past that sometimes you can't hear me all that well and every time that happens, it's when the uh, camera is pointing in the opposite direction. So, 
I'm gonna learn something today and set this up correctly. So as you guys can see, my workspace is a complete nightmare. Mainly that's because I pulled apart an entire quad uh, Saturday after I got home from annihilating its face, literally. Um, getting a drink of water, hold on. Ah, yes, water. Yeah, so I pulled apart an entire rig after I came home, and that's what you're seeing here. All the hardware from that um, rig whose face I broke off. If anybody is dying to see it, um, it's actually up over on my Patreon, which is a great segue. Um, there's a bunch of folks who are cool enough to be supporting me over on... Oh, boy. Inception. There we go. All right, let's give it a second to... Uh, wait, it's playing in two spots. Oh, God. There we go. Okay. Yikes. That was rough. Um, bunch of super cool people that are supporting me over on Patreon. All 18 of you folks are the greatest. Anybody else who wants a um, an in to all the micro secrets, there's a link for you. Uh, I have it set up like um, Joshua in that it's just access. So you pay whatever you think is, is fair, whatever you can afford. Maybe that's three bucks, maybe that's five, 10, 15, 20. Um, and you get access to the Patreon where I'm putting all of the, uh, where I'm putting all of the juicy content. So, uh, yeah, if you can spare a couple bucks and you want access, hop on over there and, uh, we'll become best friends. Bill Gates is ready. FB Wannabe was eagerly awaiting. Daryl Hickman is in Connecticut. Very cool. Daryl, I used to live in, uh, I lived in New Jersey for... 31 years um, so hello to the Northeast Red Alpha hello everyone house blog more knowledge incoming <laughs> hopefully wanna get fly sup brother bro what's up wanna get fly Simon Saucy hello hello hell that's what I'm talking about Mongo yo everyone Tom Loreth just came here for props nice <laughs> um, Tom we'll talk about in a second that a second just to remind me Daryl Hickman says, smash the like button. Yes, please, Daryl, great idea. Um, yeah, guys, give me a like, give me a subscribe, whatever. Uh, I appreciate it all. Shout out from Josh, first time we're here. Yeah, Robert, um, Joshua is the man. Double uh, A says, what is this I hear of smoke? Smoke is in here. It actually didn't smoke, but something cooked. I could smell it. Um, peace again from Austria. Very cool, Stefan. Thanks for coming. Uh, Nice looking quad, says Marcos. Thank you, brother. We'll talk about it more. Uh, FPV Jitsu, great name. <laughs> FPV Jitsu, here at the request of Joshua Bardwell. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, FPV, for coming. Um, Cole Hansen has a Kristen too. I have a Kristen with an I-N, Cole. Looks like yours has an E-N. That doesn't matter. I'm sure she's just as cool. Uh, Matthew Walsh is laughing. Uh, license to drive missed the whole of Joshua Bartwell stream. <laughs> Was out flying the last hours of daylight. Thought I'd hang out for a while here. Gr glad to have you, man. Appreciate it. Matthew says I'm awful. I couldn't agree more, Matthew. License to drive. Never seen a power bank in that shape before. I know, right? It's it's a it's hysterical. I, I assume it's just a bunch of eighteen six fifties in there. Probably like four of them. Uh, Mongo asks, what kind of motorcycle do you ride? Just say the helmets. So these are actually uh, motorsport helmets. Let me give you guys a little tour. I haven't done this recently. Um, yeah, so these are actually automobile racing helmets specifically. These are the two Stig helmets uh, from Top Gear fame. So this was the first one that I got, the Black Stig's helmet from seasons uh, one, two, three. Uh, I forget when Black Stig uh, drove off the aircraft carrier. What actually happened is the Black Stig blabbed about being the Stig, um, and then they had to get rid of him. And then he blew all of his money, and uh, apparently, and doesn't uh, doesn't have any money left. 
There's a book about it that I've been meaning to get. And then this guy here, uh, when my lovely wife Kristen got into motorsports, it was a good excuse to get the White Stigs, much more commonly known um, helmet here. Um, in case you guys are new, my background is more motorsports. Uh, then FPV. I've been into motorsports for about the last 15 or so years, been into cars for almost 20 years. Um, so FPV, to be totally honest, FPV was a cheap adrenaline hit technical engineering alternative to uh, motorsports when I basically couldn't afford, couldn't afford motorsports anymore because it is very, very expensive. Um, very, very fun, but also very expensive. And uh, so yeah, I, I've, I've much more invested, much more time and money and everything else invested in uh, driving fast. And I was actually also an instructor at the racetrack. So I'd help people go faster, safely, and, um, and yeah. So that's why you see a lot of car stuff floating around. But uh, let me say hi to you lovely people. Not everybody knows me. I always kind of assume that... Uh, that everybody knows me, which is just not true, um, because nowadays Joshua Bardwell is letting me uh, is letting me piggyback on his streams, and there's a lot of cool new people. Fifty two in here, that's awesome. Um, I usually I used to have like two or three people on my streams <laughs> until uh, I got a little love from Joshua. So my name is Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. Um, glad you guys are here. Um, check out my new shirt from Newbie Drone. They sent me this over. Um, along with their prototype brushless rig, which I've been playing around with and giving them some feedback on, um, and I'm very, very impressed with. So I think this might just become the, uh, the brushless Whoop flight controller to have. Um, I haven't really tried any of the other brushless motors, so um, these ones are really good. The other ones out there might be really good too. Uh, but uh, yeah, really, really cool little rig. I've been having a blast flying this around the house. I just put one of these little uh, Lumineer uh, Axie 2, one of the tiny little guys on there. Um, substantial weight penalty, actually. It's, a, it's almost a 2 gram antenna on a rig that weighs 20 or so grams. Um, so I don't love that, but I just, I'm, I'm picking up, D, I want to make DVR with this, so having a proper CP antenna is kind of important. The, the difference in uh, in the signal from this antenna versus one of the whips is pretty staggering. So two grams that I have to just kind of accept and uh, it is what it is. And I'm not a racer with these things, I'm just freestyling them so having the absolute most lightweight whoop is not the biggest deal in the world. It's not going to lose me races or anything like that. But uh, yeah, like I said, very very impressed by this B-Brain brushless whoop. Um, cannot wait for the uh, final version to come out because I think you guys are going to love it. Um, today we are going to talk about the sm the magic smoke uh, that was let out from this acrobrat from a comedy of errors essentially. Uh, I put a flight con so I've been using the Talon F7 flight controllers for a little bit here um, the last maybe two months or so and uh, I put a Talon F4 in here, and the, what, the pads are in completely different spots. The uh, instruction manual for the Talon F4 is not all that great um, on, who sells it? HeliDirect. Uh, and I wired something wrong or bridged the wrong uh, pads, and I believe what happened is that I sent VBAT into a 5 volt TBS Pro 32 VTX. And I think that's what, what blew up. Um, I plugged it in without a smoke stopper because this is a rig that was already built and I just swapped the flight controller. Um, and that was stupid. If, if you swap anything out in a rig, there's just no reason not to plug it in the first time with a smoke stopper. Um, that smoke stopper would have saved me on that initial plug in. But I think what would have happened is that would have limited the current through the VBAT and it would have saved the VTX, but then I would have went, oh yeah, okay, everything's fine. I would have unplugged the smoke stopper, I would have plugged it into full 4S and it would have blown up anyway. So 
No reason not to plug it into the smoke stopper first, but technically speaking, it might not necessarily have saved me in this case. But that's FPV sometimes. Um, no matter how many builds you've done, you're still going to screw up every so often. Uh, and that's okay. That's life, right? If, uh, if we didn't screw up every so often, we'd be cyborgs and uh, have guns growing out of our faces. So let's, uh, let's answer some comments. Let's get the camera off of me because it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> and uh, we will... Let me get the legs on this stand set a little bit better here. And uh, we'll troubleshoot what blew up on this thing. Like I said, I think I know what it is, but uh, we will find out for sure. And I'll ask, answer a ton of questions on the way. The first question that I can see right now on the screen is... Photo, oh cool, well, that's a cool name, Photo Finish 3, uh, asking what I'm sure others are thinking, what motors are those? Um, so these are prototype um, T-motor, I don't know if they want me to say the size, so I won't, but these are going to replace the T-motor F20, um, currently the it's a 1408 it's a t-motor f22 uh, these are going to be the t-motor f23s um, they are going to be a what so the two being a 1408 has a horrendous amount of power up top on the throttle um, but the 14 millimeter width to the stator um, in my opinion is not quite enough for a um, for a three inch prop, three inch props, in my experience, tend to want a little bit more stator width for a little bit more torque to spin them up and slow them down um, a little bit quicker. So, uh, and I've been talking about this for a long time, and I guess somebody finally heard it. And um, this motor has a wider stator for a little bit more torque and less stator height. So it's wider and shorter. What that'll do is it'll give you more mid to low throttle control of the prop um, because it, again, it has more instantaneous torque so it can spin up and slow the, uh, the props down uh, quicker. That's gonna help with prop wash, that's gonna help with throttle resolution if you're trying to fly real low to the ground and make tiny little corrections to go from, you know, two inches off the ground to two and a half inches off the ground. Um, the, uh, the, the more torquey motors are going to help a lot with that. Uh, and yeah, it's just a better, it's, it's a, it's a flight experience that more closely mimics five inch rigs in my experience. And that is really what I've tried to do over the last year with micros is get them to fly as closely to five inch rigs. And I, I should stop five inch rigs basically at this point fly perfect. They have the best mix of, um, of power and control and weight and, and everything else. So it's basically saying I'm trying to get these flying as close to perfect as possible because that's really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get it, them to fly in a way that mimics like what my brain wants to do, right? The, the big thing that struck me flying five inches um, is that they just seem like they anticipate and do exactly what you're thinking about them doing rather than what you're asking them to do. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do with micros as well. I want them to like read your mind so that when you want to shoot this little tiny gap inverted, um, it just does it. And, and you have this kind of moment where you're like, wow, I just, you know, I didn't think about pushing the sticks around to do that. I just did that. Um, and I think we have a little bit to go before micros are quite there, um, like five inch rigs, but I also think that they'll get there. I, I think that it's something that, um, that we're pretty close to and uh, we just need to kind of stick with it. So let's hop into the chat real quick here. I have a whole bunch of windows open on my computer. What is going on? Let's get this fixed here. Um, all right, lots of good questions I can already see. Um, so let's, let's dig into these questions first. Uh, yeah, let's just dive into these questions. I'm going to fly through them as quick as I can. I'm going to save a couple questions for, um, oh God, you guys are looking at my crotch. Who wants that? I'm going to save a couple questions for um, 
more lengthy discussions while I start working on this acrobrat. Um, but for right now, let's just fire through a bunch of these questions. Uh, herper derper derp. I'm looking for that comment about motorcycles. Where is it? There it is. Okay. AZ Drone Dude, hello, what is up? Wanna get fly says no tucking balls. That's strange. Uh, Ty K, happy Sunday to you as well, Ty. Uh, nightmare in my book, that's Ty. You license to drive is apparently more dirty than me. And his workbench, that is awesome. It makes me feel better. Wanna get fly is tripping, tripping, tripping. Uh, okay. Nabi says hello, what's up, Nabi? Stefan asks, how do I get the RSSI readout calibrated? It only reads 31 to 25. Same with the amps, Pyro uh, 4 board, Pyro ESC. Uh, Stefan. Gonna pause the stream. Yeah, pause the stream. Maybe you guys still have audio. Um, hopefully the stream comes back. Oh man! All right, guys, hang on. Come on, phone. I have faith in you. I'm also having an allergy attack, so uh, I apologize for all the sniffles. It's black, but you have audio. Uh, I really don't want this to fail. Don't fail, YouTube. Be be better than this, YouTube. Come on. Come back. Come back. Bumblebolt says you've got audio but black video. No. <laughs> no. Uh. Yeah. Slide by. I if the video doesn't come back, uh, this will just be a, a question and answer. Um, this will just become a uh, question and answer stream. Come on, YouTube. Yeah, it'll become a podcast. Exactly. Come on, YouTube. Come back. Come back. I can't. So the buttons that I can hit on the phone are like rotate the camera. Look at your com your chat. Um, there's this magic button. Oh, that's just stupid filters. And then there's a dot, dot, dot button. What's a dot, dot, dot button? No. See, none of these allow me to do anything. Let me go back to the chat. Did the video come back yet, guys? I'm sure it didn't, but... Uh... Well, that sucks. Um... Can somebody can yeah I, here's the problem if I oh man I just lost like 20 people if I um if I restart the screen at stream I'll lose a bunch of people but I think I need to the camera is actually on maybe just restart um, god damn it yeah all right let, let's go through the questions and then we'll it's zoomed way in really what that's weird. Um, all right, let's get through the questions and then I will jump off the roof. Well, I guess I can like just... <sighs> YouTube, you're better than this. Come on. You're better than this. Be better than this, YouTube. Really cool. yeah. No, I don't know. Something happened. It's zoomed in. That's super weird, guys. Very strange. Um, all right, let's go through the questions. We'll get caught up in the questions and then we'll see where we're at. So let's, oh no, I got the mic pointing in the wrong direction now. All right, let's move this back to this side. Cool. All right, so here we go. I see your logo in the corner of the black screen. Yeah, okay, YouTube sucks. YouTube's iPhone application sucks a big bag of dicks, so. We got that going for us, guys. Let's just rip through these questions, like I said, though. Um, all right. Stefan, talking about the RSSI readout calibrated. Um, it's in the CLI, Stefan. I think it's um, uh, I think it's uh, Oscar Liang that has a really good article about how to, um, how to calibrate the RSSI uh, data flights. 
So I just searched for Calibrate RSSI Beta Flight, and of course Joshua has a video in here. Um, and yeah, there it is. Our, um, Oscar Liang has a couple RSSI video, uh, uh, pages on his website, so I would check those out. Um, I've never had to do it, which is why I don't I don't know how to um, to to do the RSSI for the amps. It's just in the batteries tab in Betaflight. Um, I just what I do is usually it's pretty close, but I'll just like move it up by one or two points at a time. Plug my battery into a checker or a multimeter to see what the voltage it's at, um, and then. Uh, plug it into the quad, see where it reads out. The only thing to remember is, as soon as you plug a battery into the into your quad, uh, th there are things that are going to pull on the battery, even though you're not armed. The VTX is pulling on the battery, the receiver is, um, so the voltage is going to drop like 0.1 or 0.2 typically. So just keep that in mind. All uh, right. X Stinger asks, is newbie drones acrobat a good mini whoop to learn on? Absolutely, X Stinger. Um, it's a really good learner uh, quad. You can fly it anywhere. Um, it's got a little bit more power than the brushed one, so it's going to fight the wind a little bit better. It's still very light, so flying it outside in the wind is going to be a nightmare, uh, but on a still day, it'll absolutely work outside. Um, highly recommended. Um, I think it's going to be worth the wait because it's not out quite yet. Um, slide by. My LaForge V4 is only seeing one antenna. Any idea what to do to fix this or what to look for? Man, slide by. The, when when our components see one of the, so my dad comes from like old school electrical engineering. Um, he's been doing it for for thirty forty years. Um, he tells me about way back when that you could actually troubleshoot this stuff. Whereas nowadays it's been shrunken down so much that. It's, it's almost impossible to, to troubleshoot beyond, like, is it getting power? Is it very obviously broken? Um, is there a pin broken? So you're basically going to be looking at the very basic stuff, and then if that's not it, um, you're going to be contacting UBAD to, uh, to ask them what, you know, what they can do for you because the components are just so small nowadays that you just can't see, and, and they, they fail internally, and... You know, a chip on the board will look completely fine, and it'll just be dead on the inside. Um, there's all these tiny, tiny little um, little connections inside of there that open and close, and if you put too much voltage or if something weird happens, um, they can just blow up. So, you know, look for all the standard things. Clean the little pin on the antenna that you're plugging in there. Try a different antenna. Um, you know, get a Q-tip and run it around inside the SMA to make sure it's not dirty. Um, you know, look for any obvious defects, and then at that point, you've kind of done everything you can. Contact UBAD and uh, ask them what they can do for you. Um, Nabi says, hi from Texas. What's up, man? Uh, Ty, newbie question. How does going from 1S to 2S to 3S batteries affect motor choices? Um, is that a bad idea or a viable option? Whoops and toothpicks. Want to go from slow and gentle to fast. All right, Ty, great question. Um, so... Here's what you want to remember. 1S is one cell. So when it's fully charged, 4.20 volts per cell. 2S is two cells. You double that. So that's the biggest jump. 1S to 2S is the biggest jump. Um, so it's kind of hard to take a, a, a motor with that's designed for 1S and run it on 2S because the designers of that motor said, okay, the, um, the maximum RPM that we can spin this motor efficiently is, um, it's probably somewhere around 25,000 kV, 20, um, 24,000 kV or so. Um, so they'll say, okay, we don't want to be right at the limit. Let's back it off a little bit and do um, maybe 20,000 kV, um, which is a very common uh, kV for the little brushless swoop motors. Well, now you run that on 2S, and it's the equivalent of 40,000 kV, right? And that's just too much. So you get battery sag, and, and the amp draw goes through the roof. Maybe you blow up the ESC. Um, the only way to get around that is to put a limiter on the throttle. Um, but what that won't do is limit the PID loop. The PID loop will still ask for that full 40,000 kV at times, um, and that's not great. There is a new field in 
um, beta flight that allows you to limit the, what the PID loop asks for, but last I saw from one of Joshua's video, it wasn't working quite right. Um, so for the time being, I, and, and maybe it's fixed by now, but it's still not the best idea. You, you still do want to kind of pick a cell size and get motors that, um, in my opinion at least, it's, it's better to kind of do that and get motors that are specifically kind of set up for that cell size. So, um, and, and what that KV is depends upon a lot of things. It depends on um, the, the, the all up weight of the quad, uh, the, the battery voltage, the battery size, because you don't want to crush the battery too quickly and have a 30 second flight time. Um, it also depends on the size of the props, the pitch of the props. So there's a lot that it go, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, this is something that I try to talk a lot about over on my Patreon because it's fairly in depth, um, you know, figuring that combination out. Um, and it's something that does take a little bit of time. It takes a little bit more time than what we have here. Cause there's a million other questions. Um, but there's a link to my Patreon page. Um, if you want to dive in deeper to those combinations, hop on over for a couple bucks a month, you get access to the page where I'm posting and talking about that. And then of course you're going to have access to me directly. Um, so you can ask me any questions that you've got. So, uh, yeah, that's all I really, that's as deep as I want to go into that now. Um, if I choose to restart the stream and, and work on this, uh, acro brat, maybe we'll dive a little deeper. Um, but that's a really good question, Ty. That, that's a really, really good question. It's really important to kind of understand um, how uh, battery voltage is, affects KV. And, and it's something that is hard to kind of figure out at first. So um, I'm sure you weren't the only one with that question. Uh, so thanks for asking. Simon Saucy asks, so what are your thoughts? I know it's really old, but the flight test Gremlin that was my first drone I ever built and the new upgrades... Um, done to it, uh, do you think it's still a good one to recommend? Simon Saucy asks an OG question, man. Awesome. I love that, uh, that you're asking about the Gremlin because those were available when I first got started in this. Um, I got a Baby Hawk, the original white one, and I wanted, very quickly, I wanted to get it out of the plastic frame and into a carbon frame, and the Gremlin frames were one of the only options back there. Um, the, the reason why I didn't go down that route is... I looked at the weight of the, I weighed my white plastic baby hawk frame and then um, I looked at the gremlin frames and they were a lot heavier. Um, and the baby hawk drivetrain was nothing special. The, the little 1104, uh, like 5000, I think KV, 5250 maybe KV motors um, did not make a lot of power. So the last thing I wanted to do was put more weight on there. Um, that being said, the gremlin frames are also very durable and having a worse power to weight ratio makes a quad easier to fly um, and better to learn on. Um, back then that would have been a good thing for me, but I just wanted more power, more power, more power because of course that'll make me a better pilot, right? Um, not true at all. Swinging with a weighted bat with a low power rig makes learning so much easier, which is something that I preach to all of my students at the racetrack who would, you know, come up to their first event and complain halfway through their, their first run um, that, you know, all the problems are being caused by the car not having enough power or suspension or grip and that, you know, they're the best driver in the world. And I would politely try to explain to them, look, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years and I still suck. Um, so if you're the best driver in the world on your first run, then you're better than me. And that's pretty damn impressive. Um, but just in case you aren't and you do want to get better at driving, here's how you do it. Leave your car alone. Don't twin turbo it after your first event. It'll make it impossible to drive. Um, quads are the same way. Arguably the quads are even worse because it's harder to fly a quad than to drive a car, right? Driving a car, you only have to worry about going forward, backward, left, and right. Um, whereas with one of these things, you can go up, down, left, right, forward, backward, y'all. You guys know what's what. Uh, so yeah. Gremlin would probably be a really, really good option for somebody that's learning to fly, but I can tell you that you're going to run into the, to the, um, it's going to become a limiting factor at some point for sure, because uh, it's a heavier frame, and it's one of the older frames. There's a lot of newer frames that have just, you know, benefited from a lot of, a lot more crash testing that uh, this community has done. Um, so, 
but yeah, great question, man. Good, good to see a uh, an OG um, micro person in here. Bill Riffitt is waving from Northwest Indiana. What's up, Bill? Tom, Stefan, where from Austria? Marcos, the Stig helmet. All right, so here goes where I was giving you guys the tour. Uh, do, 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 do. Sketch PV, you can't be the Stig because I am the Stig. Uh, do, 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 do. FPV wannabe says he's the Stig Stig. All right, well, I mean, that's okay. You can be the Stig Stig, the Stig's Stig, I guess, since I'm the Stig. Um, <laughs> License to Drive said it's also a safe adrenaline hit compared to motorsports. Absolutely, so long as you remember to take the props off during maintenance. Yeah, man, for sure. Motorsports, when, when you really get into motorsports and you really learn how to drive, um, the... It gets a little, uh, it gets a little sketchy. You start to go through corners with an amount of momentum and energy that is crazy, <laughs> and um, the consequences of getting it wrong just go up and up and up and up and up. Um, so yeah, you got motorsports is uh, is really really fun, but when you start to get good, things can get out of hand in in a hurry. Um, so yeah, FPV is uh, one hell of a of an alternative. Uh, what else? Sketch PV, same here with motorsports. After a couple serious wrecks and surgeries, get my kicks from FPV now. Um, that can happen too. Yeah, if you get it wrong, you can uh, for real get hurt and uh, wind up in the hospital. Nice to meet you all. Says Creeper for <laughs> Creeper for twenty FPV. Nice, great name. Um, saw you on Joshua's stream and wanted to come and meet you. Hey, man, if you're still here, uh, thanks for coming by. That's super cool of you. Uh, House Blog found the Matty Flip video from Quad Camp the other day. Fun clip. Thanks, man. I put a ton of time into that edit. Um, Joshua also has an edit from that event, which is pretty fun. Um, that is where that, that event is pretty much where I got, you know, any amount of um, a kick in the ass in terms of anybody caring about who I am. <laughs> so I'm kind of forever grateful for Joshua for making his edit of that because he has obviously a much bigger audience than myself. Um, but my edit of it has a little bit more kind of like behind the scenes. Um, and is uh, I've been told is super fun. So if you guys don't know that, click through to my, uh, my little logo there, my name, and it is like the, the, the welcome video on my, uh, on my channel. You can check it out. Um, it's a fun little story with uh, a bunch of the guys that you'll know. Corey, Cricket, um, Bot Grinder's in there, Stingy's in there, um, Oh My God is in there, Drew, um, and it's Quad Camp Atlanta from last year, like a year and a half ago. All right, more questions. Wouldn't the smoke stopper light up, um, says Ty. My, I've been using this TBS smoke stopper which does not light up. Although that's actually a really good question. I do have the the other OG. So the, the TBS smoke stopper doesn't have a light on it. Um, I only have an XT60 version of the original smoke stopper. And I don't want to blow anything else up in this. It probably doesn't matter. But I don't think I have an XT30 smoke stopper. Um, or if I do, I gave it away. But yeah, the, the TBS smoke stopper doesn't have the light on it. Uh, which you just made me realize kind of sucks. Uh, Photo Finish asks, what motors are those? I think we talked about that. Nabi asks, why would my video go off, then black? Wait, no. Off, then back on when I take sharp corners. I can almost guarantee you that is a, um, a wiring problem There's a, or a plug problem. When you take hard corners, you're generating a lot of G-force, and that strikes me that that G-force is moving one of the wires or one of the connectors to a point where it's breaking its contact, and it's losing contact, shutting off and back on. Um, I, it could be other things, but I think that's the most likely. So what I would do is take the props off, turn the quad on, and just sit there with either your fingers or a pair of non-conductive pliers or like a stick or just anything that's not metal right because you're putting power to the board you've got exposed components you don't want to touch two of those components um, and short them and blow something up so 
take a toothpick or your fingers or whatever and just go through the path of your video system and move the wires around and see if you can reproduce this problem and have it shut off and on. Um, if that doesn't find it, then it's deeper and you need to start switching components to figure out what component has failed. Um, you know, try a different camera, see if that fixes it. Try a different VTX, see if that fixes it. Um, maybe even try a different flight controller. It could be a lot of different things. Um, it also depends upon where the power is. So if, if, if the camera is turning off and on, so if, let me take a step back. To be sure that the camera is turning back and off and on, you're gonna get the splash screen. Um, so I'm gonna make an assumption that you already know that and that that's how you know it's the camera turning off and on is because you're getting the splash screen. Um, so it really becomes about where's your camera getting power from. If it's getting power from the flight controller, it could be a flight controller problem. If it's getting power from the VTX, um, we, we pretty much eliminated the flight controller from that mix. Although that does depend on how the VTX is getting power, right? Um, if the VTX is also shutting down, you might not know it because the, uh, the recycle time on the camera is a lot more than on the VTX. Um, if I sound far away, it's because I am. My cat is biting me right now. Um, he came in and wanted to say hi, so I had to let him bite me for a minute. Uh, but yeah, th that's how you want to troubleshoot that. Just think basics, um, trace the power, trace the video, see if there's a break somewhere, and uh, you'll track it down. All uh, right, lots more good questions. Let's keep going. Uh, Prop Pirate says, good lessons right here. Pay attention, gonna pay attention closely. Thank you, man. Cool of you to say. Uh, do, 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 do. FPV Wannabe says, I bought one also. I think he's talking about the Whoop. Uh, very new to the hobby. Bridging pads to raise voltage was, what? Bridging pads to raise voltage was a bit too hard, especially with lack of instructions. Uh, screwed up a pad, trying to solder Mamba much easier. Oh, oh, FPV Wannabe was talking about the uh, the Talon. Yeah, the pads on the Talon are very small. Um, I take that for granted uh, because I've been soldering for a long time. Um, so yeah, that's true. Very, very true. Uh, Bernat coming over from Joshua's stream. Good to have you, Bernat. Uh, FPV Jitsu had a smoke stopper. Uh, when I did it, the bulb was like a flash grenade <laughs> and instantly flew. My VTX, that sucks, man. Welcome to the hobby. That is FPV at times, unfortunately. Um, Bernat asks, beginner three inch you'd recommend. Bernat, for uh, for ready to flies, I'm going to refer you to Nick Burns' channel. Um, I don't really test any of the ready to flies, uh, but Nick tests a lot of them, and he does a better job than anyone else, in my opinion on testing them. Um, so head over to Nick, N-I-C-K, Burns, B-U-R-N-S channel, and uh, just start bouncing around. He is, he really tests these things. He doesn't just get them from, you know, the manufacturer from Banggood, put a battery through them, and then just as quickly as possible get a video out um, just to capture that, you know, fresh new crop of people that are looking for videos. He actually puts 30, 40, 50 batteries through these things so that he can not only tell you um, his initial thoughts from the first battery, but he can tell you I crashed it 18 times and it survived or it caught on fire or you know this part failed. Um, with a lot of the ready to flies to, to save money and get the price down, they will put in um, clone stuff or just lower grade electronics and they can just fail for no reason after 20 batteries or 30 batteries. Um, so Nick is kind of doing God's work by, uh, by putting that much time in because it is really important. Um, and there's a reason why building from scratch with top-notch components costs more than buying a ready-to-fly. Um, and that's really it. You know, the, the components are manufactured cheaper so that the total price of the rig can be cheaper. Um, so go figure, you get what you paid for. Uh, do 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 License to drive brings up a really good point. Uh, Nabi sounds like voltage sag from the motor, sucking too much from the battery. How's it powered, BEC or direct battery voltage? That's another really good point. Um, it could absolutely be battery sag. I would more, um, if it was uh, voltage sag though, I would more think the VTX would want to um, reset because the VTX is in need of more power than the camera. The camera is not really all that amp hungry. 
But you never know. I mean, there, it could absolutely be... Um, and, and voltage sag like this is called brownout. The other thing that will typically happen on a brownout is you'll shit your pants. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the other thing that will happen with a brownout is that you'll... Um, you will uh, drink too much brown liquor and then um, not remember things from the night before. Or uh, what will happen is the flight controller will shut down. That's what will actually happen on a brownout. Um, so, and, and when that happens, you'll hear the ESC beep and, and there'll be other things that indicate that that happened. So um, could totally be that. Uh, I think it's more of a loose connection because I've never had a brownout that only shuts the camera down. Um, photo finish asks 1507 um, I think in reference to these prototype T motors uh, and my answer will be no not a 1507 uh, Nabi says 9 volt regulator on board all right we've talked about it. I think we're good um, photo finish yes you do need them these motors for your acrobat these are hands down the best acrobat motors I have ever flown and I am I've flown probably about 10 different sets of motors on the Acrobrat. Um, all right. Double A asks, Aaron, have you ever considered coaching quad racers? Um, I would love to get more involved with instructing within FPV. Um, I don't quite know how to do it because, um, so with motorsports, Everybody has to come to the racetrack to do it. So me being at the racetrack is pretty obvious, and it's a pretty easy way to have access to those students looking to go faster, be safer, have more fun, yada, yada, yada. Um, FPV is not like that, right? FPV is a very localized um, hobby. So I live in Atlanta, um, so I... In th you know, in theory, I'm in this like the spot for FPV, right? Here's the thing, though: a lot of people in Atlanta have been pushed by all the top pilots that are here, and they're really good, and they're really not necessarily um, two things: they're not open to coaching. They think, well, I'm I'm good enough already. You know, a, a, a an instructor or coach isn't really going to be able to help me, um, which I thought that for a long time um, as a driver before I started instructing. Um, and then after I started instructing, I realized how wrong that was. Um, the best drivers in the world have full-time instructors. Um, you know, F1 drivers, that's all they do is, is pour over data and, and work with, uh, teachers and instructors. Um, so that's one thing, but it's, like I said, it's a common thing for people to think, oh, I'm not going to get anything out of instruction. I'm already pretty good. Um, the other thing is how, how do I do it? Like, how, you know, how do I get in front of these people? Right. Uh, a couple people from Atlanta, sure, I'll, I'll be able to do it, but the rest of you guys are all over the place. Um, so, you know, that makes me think about, what about simulators? Um, I don't know. I It's something that I'm thinking about. Uh, you guys are making me kind of realize that there is something to be had for me as like a personality here on YouTube and on Patreon and whatnot. Um, so you guys have me thinking about all kinds of stuff. This is one of the things that I'm definitely considering um, it's just a matter of figuring out how to, how to do it. Um, how do I make it worth my time? I hate to say that. I feel like a jerk saying that, but it's true. Um, because I have a limited amount of time that I can put into FPV. Um, so I have to make sure it, it makes sense and, and it's still made, it's still fun for me. So I don't kind of drive this hobby into the ground. Um, but awesome question. I love that question. Um, I also don't know if I would be any good coaching racers, uh, quad racers, because I myself don't race quads. Um, I don't find it to be fun. Um, if there was a way to, to, to have it be more three-dimensional, I think it would be really fun. But on the smaller scale, right, racing is typically pool noodles in a, in a big, flat, wide-open field, um, which if I hadn't spent the last 15 years pretty much doing that in a car, I would probably think is much more fun than it is. But if, if I want to race in two dimensions, you know, forward, backward, left, and right, I want to do it in a car. I want to have to manage the weight of the car, the contact patch of the tire. I want to be able to adjust all these things that I've spent the last 15 years learning how to adjust. Um, if I'm going to fly a quad, I want it to be dynamic. I want to use up and down, left and right, yaw, um, all that good stuff. So that's why I gravitate towards freestyle. 
Um, but great question, Double A. Um, I appreciate uh, you know you even thinking that I would <laughs> be good at that. Um, that means a lot. But yeah, rest assured, it's something that I'm thinking about. I got to figure out a way. I, I I want to be able to share piloting skills, not just the technical stuff. The technical stuff is great, and learning to build a rig that flies really good um, is important and does help you as a pilot, but um, piloting skills are 90% of the equation um, in terms of having fun and, and being able to do cool shit. Uh, doop a doop a doop of more questions. I think I, I feel like I'm falling behind, so let me go through these fast. Um, although I guess it doesn't matter now that the video is gone uh, from the stream. We're just audio anyway, so maybe this will just be a straight-up podcast. Um, Photo Finish is glad it's here. I'm glad you're here too. Uh, should I move it to VCC, Nabi asks, on 6S? Ooh, that depends. Let's talk more about it. I'm going to get caught up. Um, Danny Bravo asks, am I going to post a parts list? Um, I'm assuming that you mean for the Acrobrat. I have a, um, I have a, uh, rotor builds with the part, parts list at a Ciotti FPV on rotor builds. Um, I, I'm Ciotti FPV everywhere, guys, Instagram, Facebook. Um, uh, yeah, look for me all over the place. If you want lots of fun shit, <laughs> um, house blog talking to Nabi. Awesome. Thanks, bud. Breaking news, I'm still awake, Michael Ward says. Hopefully you're still here. I'm happy that you're still awake. Hopefully you've learned something already and you'll learn some more. Uh, X Stigger asks, is Newbie Drones Acrobat a good mini whoop to learn? We talked about that. Good, good, good. Tiny Hawk Freestyle Props. All right, Tom. Uh, what, what size prop will the Tiny Hawk Freestyle clear? I want to say it's 2 inch. If it is 2 inch, you want to get the... Emax Rush uh, three blade and the so basically what you want because I know that that freestyle has 1103 motors um, you want the least pitchy two inch props you can find because um, those are really all that those 1103s are going to want to turn um, so that that two inch blur three blade I believe that's the lowest pitch um, Two inch prop that's available. So if you're not already on that one, which you probably already are, stick with it. It's also very, very durable. Um, yeah, that's the prop you want. That's actually the prop you want, come to think of it. Until somebody comes out with a good by blade two inch, um, you want to stick with that blade, uh, that blur uh, three blade. Uh, but hopefully somebody will, at, at some point here will come out with a good two blade uh, two inch prop, and that's going to be really good on those 1103s. Here's where the video went black, uh, just when you were about to read my question. Uh, slide by, hopefully I've answered that question. If not, ask it again, I'll totally hook you up. Uh, Prop Pirate says they throttle your fun connection. No, the, the YouTube application just sucks, I guess, because this has happened a couple times now. Uh, now it's a podcast, hot, <laughs> hot camera. Yep, hot BTX, hell yeah. Um, thank God it's not a wind blows thing, says Bill Gates. <laughs> nice. Uh, May, May C E M A C E Y E E. Question: How to best improve 90 millimeter quad with 1104 motors? Uh, props, prop choice is huge. I would do that first. Um, just buy them all. Uh, <laughs> 90. What's 90 millimeters? 90 millimeters is big, isn't it? 90 millimeters in inches. 90 millimeters is 3.5 inches, so I'm assuming that's the motor-to-motor -motor distance um, because I don't know of anything that has a 3.5-inch prop. So, yeah, if, if you're a 2-inch prop, buy a bunch of the 2-inch props out there. See how you like them. Uh, same thing with 2.5 or even 3 inches. Uh, there will be a prop that you work best with, like your brain, your thumbs, whatever. Um, there will also be props that are not durable and that are durable. Sometimes it's a, it's a balancing act. So get a bunch of the props that are sized for that rig, try them out, and see which ones you like best, and then report back. Uh, tell me the two or three that you like best, and I'll tell you why you like them the best, um, and we'll compare notes. How about that, Macy? 
Uh, Bumblebolt, Simon Saucy, restart the stream. Yeah, maybe we'll do that in a minute. Uh, refresh, refresh equals black stream and audio return. Black stream, negative on the video. That sucks. Uh, we don't care about video, just answer questions, says Danny Bravo. Thank you, Danny Bravo. <laughs> uh, dur -dur 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 -dur. Stream problem, stream problem, stream problems. Uh, circle chasing its tail, logo and audio, black video for me. Canon camera I don't use. Yeah, I have one too. Prop Pyre, I, I appreciate that, man. He says, I've got a camera camera, I don't use it all. Give it to you the stream if it will help. Um, I have a, a Canon DSLR, an SL1, um, that uh, at some point here I'll get set up for the stream. Uh, but for now, I just keep doing it on my phone just because it's so much easier. Uh, release date for the newbie drone. Photo finish asks. The, I am on an NDA, um, and NDAs are kind of confusing, and I don't want to say the wrong thing. I my guess is towards the end of this month, maybe the beginning of next month. That is absolutely just a guess. Um, I don't think they've given a date yet. Um, this being a prototype, it's not perfect, and we've been giving them some feedback, um, and they're going to have to take it back and, and, and do some things with it. Uh, so, you know, it's not going to be next week, I guess is just what I'm saying. Um, but I don't know. I, I would not be surprised if it was the end of September. That is totally just a close my eyes and point guess, though. Uh, but it'll be soon. They're very close. This is damn good. Um very close to being kind of perfect in in my opinion for for 1s uh moving on slide by says after flight the other day went to unplug the battery motors spun up for about half a second not full speed and my transverter was on the bench so i didn't hit arm what would cause that esc is going i, I know that probably the esc slide by um that's creepy. I, I hate when creepy stuff like that happens, but my guess is going to be ESC. Could also be the flight controller, but if you already know the ESC is on its way out, um, just replace it. Uh, why uh, Nabi asks, why sometimes when I arm quad, one, one ESC will not spin, but I unplug and replug and it works again. If you find the answer to that, let me know, because I've always wondered myself. Um, uh, might be an ESC that's on its way out, would be my guess. Uh, so there's that. Good link for Spectrum DX6E setup, asks Bill Gates. I have no idea. I know nothing about Spectrums. I never got one of their radios um, or transmitters. But I'm sure if you type Spectrum DX6E setup into YouTube, you'll get some nice tutorials and or Google. All right. Creeper likes his Tyro 79. Good to know. Um, more power equals better track times. That's not always true. Certainly can be true, um, but not always true if it's too much power or... Here's a great saying. Uh, this is a Miata saying. If you can't drive 90 horsepower fast, you're not going to be able to drive 900 horsepower fast. <laughs> um, Slow car fast is another way to think about it. But having a slow car or a slow quad um, and learning to drive that thing fast is going to make you a, a much better driver in a much shorter period of time than having a 900 horsepower car that you're struggling with. Um, and the same can go for quads. If you're struggling because it's got so much power, um, it's going to make it so much harder for you to learn. Uh, and be a better driver on because you're literally just hanging on for dear life the entire time rather than learning the intricacies and the and the uh, the finer points of driving or flying um, uh, Bumblebolt says first quad was a six inch success with gate breakers Jesus Christ man very very unforgiving for uh, to be able to go zero to 100 in point two seconds yeah for sure man for sure um, uh, Sean Hale says your video is black. I know I might restart the stream, but I do want to get through these questions first. Um, License to drive said it's turned into a podcast. Hey, I'm at the bottom of the questions. Look at that. Now that a whole bunch of people are gone. <laughs> um, no video, Rick. Yeah, sorry, man. Uh, you know, let's get through these videos and I will restart the stream. 
Um, uh, yeah, because we're at the hour mark, so it'll be an hour's worth of podcast, and then uh, we'll restart the stream and get video for another hour. Uh, Eureka! Hey, Seattle, first time catching one of these. I was curious if you got any advice, best practice for... <laughs> Eureka asking the question. Um, curious if you have any advice slash best practices for minimizing jello on three-inch split style setups. Um, so, Eureka, this is the question that I've been working on for the last, working on answering for the last year and continue to work on. Um, I'm going to table that. I'm going to get caught up on the rest of the stream. We're going to restart the stream so that we have video and then I'm going to answer your questions. So, if you're still here, uh, re I'm going to try to remember this question because it's the question. Um, uh, I want to talk more about it. A license to drive says instructors, and it's, I can already tell he's dead on the money. Instructors have an outside perspective view of your skills and style that's very difficult for you to see because you only have your own perspective. Not only that, but as a driver or a pilot, every single bad pilot that you, bad pilot, great, bad habit that you've picked up you don't know it's a bad habit yet. You just think it's what you do. Um, and that's very hard to get out of. And, and it's, it's very hard for you to see it because it's just, like I said, it's just what you do in a situation. Um, and I myself have had that happen to me as a driver. I was a driver winning a lot of events, but I'd picked up some very glaring bad habits that an instructor from another region um, noticed and helped me get out of, and that made me even faster. But I was already at the top of the region that I was running in, um, you know, winning my class week after week after week. Um, so yeah, instructors will see things that you don't. Uh, they also have a very unique window on the basics. This is something that I, I was not expecting when I started instructing. In order for me to explain things to people, I had to break these higher level concepts down into bite-sized little chunks. And in doing so, it helps me understand them better. Um, so being an instructor, just that process actually makes you learn a lot and, and really helps out quite a bit. Um, so if, if you guys ever have the chance to teach somebody, do it because you'll learn a lot in that process, which is kind of slick. Um, Bumblebolt says, get sponsored by Liftoff to create a trick series tutorial set. Um, so here's what I have to say about that. That's a really great thought. Um, first off, Liftoff does not have much of a budget. I know for a fact they are a small little company with just a couple folks. Um, so if I was to do something like that, I would. I pretty much guarantee I'd have to do it like sort of gratis, you know, for the love of the of the hobby and helping people out, which would be super fun. I would love to do that. Um, I, I back when I flew Liftoff, I talked to those guys quite a bit. Uh, quite a bit in their uh, Facebook group because I was trying to get Liftoff to feel, uh, f trying to figure out settings that would make it feel look more like a micro because that's when I was flying micros only. Um, uh, the trick series, trick tutorial thing is, there There are plenty of people who've done it. Um, and there's learning like the stick commands to do it is one part of the puzzle. But there are so many things going on at once. With FPV, you really need an instructor standing next to you or watching every single move of yours um, to really figure out what you're doing wrong. So um, I had an experience at Quad Camp Knoxville that Joshua invited me out to to help out as an instructor um, where I was teaching somebody to do power loops. And um, in doing so, just because I was standing next to him, I was able to look down at his thumbs on the controller, which I guess I could do in Velocidrone by looking at the uh, the stick overlay. Um, but when he was doing a power loop, he would get all thrown off. And the reason why is that when he was increasing throttle, he was also adding yaw. And it's hard to see that. It's impossible to see that at the point of the power loop that he was at because he was looking at the sky. So there was no reference point whatsoever to be able to tell that he was adding this yaw in as he was raising the throttle. Um, so it's it's little subtle things like that that make doing a trick tutorial, they're the reason why I've never done a trick tutorial video because I think there's just more to it than, hey, here's how you do this trick. Pitch forward, roll left, 
increase the throttle. Um, just knowing that initial stick command is like 1% of the trick. There's a million other little uh, tiny things that go into it, um, which is why I think you just have to be there. You, you have to be live with one-on-one -on -one to, to really teach somebody a trick. Um, and I want to I want to figure out how to do that. I, I really truly do want to figure out how to bring more instruction to FPV. Um, so yeah, I mean you guys have some awesome ideas already. Keep them coming. I'll keep thinking about it. And uh, hey, maybe I'll figure it out someday, and uh, I can be, you know, Joshua is the FPV know-it-all. Maybe I can be the FPV instructor. Who knows? I would love that though. Uh, Rick Butler, no video. Yeah, we're gonna hopefully fix that in a minute. Uh, oh, almost caught up. Uh, Stan Roland, yeah, black screen. We're a podcast today. Prop Pirate went to the drone races in Dallas last night. Learned so much for just watching those guys through my goggles. Such a rush. High bar to aim for. Yeah, man, the, the, the racers are fantastic pilots. Much respect for those guys. Um, I personally don't find it fun, but who cares what I like? <laughs> Uh, do do do. Slide by quad spun rotors. One I went to unplug a battery. Transmitter's on the bench, so I didn't disarm. I spun it for half a second. Uh, didn't quite what happened. Happened three times. Man, that's weird. Slide by. Um, just try to troubleshoot it step by step. Try to just troubleshoot one thing at a time. That always helps me. Um, <laughs> Plasma Trout says Black Stream needs to be the name of your signature motor. It's nice. <laughs> um, slide by says thanks for the answer. I wouldn't think that one ESC could cause all four to spin. Oh, I didn't realize all four of them spun. Um, damn, man, that's 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 strange. Uh, is there a capacitor on the build? Maybe the capacitor is. Nah, I don't think that would do anything. That's weird, man. Um, Cole Hansen says I passed this question up. All right, let me find it. Cole Hansen asks, well, I did. Sorry about that, brother. How much throttle should I be giving? Oh, I missed a couple, didn't I? No, 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 I didn't. I literally just skipped Cole Hansen's. Awesome. I hate when I do that. Um, how much throttle should I be giving my Tiny Hawk ready to fly to hover in auto level mode? Um, I, I've never flown that exact uh, rig, Cole, so I don't know. Um, what motors and props are on it? I can probably give you some idea. Um, and are, are, do you think there's a problem with it? Is that why you're asking that? Uh, I, I think that's one of the smaller ones. So your, my hunch is your throttle point's probably going to be like 40%, maybe even higher. The, the little, I, I, again, it depends on the motors. Tell me more about that build and, and I'll, I'll be able to answer that a little bit better. Um, what's up with the black screen? It's because the YouTube iPhone application sucks. I got a phone call when I was streaming like 10 minutes in and it just freaked out. Um, so we're gonna stop the stream once I get totally caught up here and restart it to get video again. Um, Daniel Robinson asks, what was your first satisfying quad and what was your first build? Daniel, ask me that again when I restart the stream because I'll show it to you. Um, I, I put it Oh no, I don't have it. I don't have my first micro. My buddy Luke is borrowing it. Um, I might as well just answer it then. Um, my first FPV quad was a, the original white Baby Hawk um, that I modded so much that it doesn't really have many parts from the original Baby Hawk left. Uh, and I'm letting a friend of mine borrow who didn't have a micro who I wanted to say like, you know, hey, here, fly this around your yard. Um, he's got four kids, so he doesn't get a ton of time to fly five inch rigs. Um, and I wasn't flying the damn thing, so I let him borrow it a while back, and he still has it. He still flies it, so he can keep it for as long as he's still flying it. Um, and then first satisfying quad. That, that's a much more interesting question. Um, the <laughs> And all you micro guys are going to hate this question, but the, the first build that I was totally shocked um, about the, the flight performance of was a five inch rig. It, it was a, um, Kebab and I became friends and he sent me, when he found out I didn't have a, a five inch rig, he sent me one of his prototype frames. It was his first frame, the Flow Ride. Um, and I built that with his recommended gear. Uh, they were BBB 2207 high KV motors, 2650 KV motors, uh, 4S 1300 batteries, 
um, uh, I don't remember the rest of the gear on there, but um, low pitch freestyle kind of props, and it was mind blowing the amount of authority that the that the error correction had, and um, it, it was just incredible. It really reset my view of what these aircraft can do. Um, and ever since that, I've been trying to get micros to that point, and we're getting closer, but we are not there quite yet, in my opinion. Um, I'm gonna, Nabi. Um, so, yeah, that's a great question, though, Daniel Robinson. I really like that question, man. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna blow through the rest of these and restart it. Uh, because as soon as I restart the stream, I'm going to lose all these questions. So everybody stop typing <laughs> um, so I can get caught up and I can reboot the stream. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, Bumble Bowl. Oh, that's interesting. ESC in the correct protocol. Very interesting um, for that weird ESC issue. Um, uh, yeah, if you guys are going to type in the chat, just say hi to each other. <laughs> Don't ask any actual questions until I restart. Uh, cat to VBAT, slide by, do me a favor, re-ask this question in, in the uh, in the new stream. Prop Pyre, I'd really like to see you troubleshoot that magic smoke. Okay, good. Uh, critical skill, great, great, great. Uh, bunch of people retracting their messages. Stop asking questions so we can restart the stream. All right, cool. We're there. We did it. All right, so I'm going to stop this thing, and I'm actually super interested in how many of you 35 awesome people will make it to the new one. Um, uh, sorry, slide by. You're going to have to ask Bumble with that again because I'm hitting stop on the stream now. Um, let me do this one more time. Here is the Patreon in case you guys don't come back. Um, join me over there. Lots of good tech. Um, and uh, yeah. All right. Stopping the stream. Restarting. See you.